I'm going to put forth an idea, a question. Is older software better, right? Does older software more often than not make better software? I want you to think about this and keep an open mind for a moment because so many components of the modern computers we use today in 20, 2025, 2000 freaking 25, man, that's the future. Many of the components of those computers were created not just years ago, but decades ago. <laughs> we're coming up on a hundred years and close to on some of these things. And maybe that's a really good thing. Uh, this kind of kind of started bouncing around in my head like Pac-Man recently because of the uh, the fork of Xorg. Uh, many of you saw that uh, uh, Xorg, the open source X11 implementation, which, been, which has been around since the early 90s and has been more or less abandoned by their development team for, for a number of years now, is, is being forked by some, some people and developers that really want to continue it going forward. And I've seen a lot of people saying how that's not a good thing, that the software is too old. It's too old, you gotta let it die. It's just too old, right? Um, uh, someone, someone mentioned this here, you know, starting a repository, this person says, is easy, but maintaining software that survived the last ice age is not easy. Huh. And it just kind of, my first in reaction to that was, um, <laughs> that someone's saying Xorg, which really started, by the way, just a little history lesson, Xorg is a fork of something called XFree86, which was an open source X11, X Windows implementation, um, which itself was another fork of something called X386, which started development back in 1991. Okay, so really Xorg has its lineage that goes all the way back in terms of its individual piece of source to 1991. So saying that that's too old for development to continue, it's that's the last ice age. It needs to be discontinued, throw it in the dumpster fire. People are saying that, people who are using Linux, which was also first developed in 1991. And I, I, it seems to me that there's a bit of a disconnect there, right? People are attributing age to being a problem with software when the software age is really not an issue because they're still using Linux, right? And so I, I, so I put, started putting together a list, a quick list of, of some of old pieces of software and computer related standards that we still utilize today. Um, I'm gonna start with some of the more recent stuff. Uh, Unicode, for example, came out in 1992. I did an article about the history of Unicode just recently, but it came out in 1992. We're still using Unicode today. That's roughly the same age as Xorg. How about SGML? SGML, everyone's like, what the frig is an SGML? Well, SGML, is a markup language which was renamed when to HTML when Tim Berners-Lee copied it. So, because Tim Berners-Lee didn't actually invent HTML, many people believe he did, but he didn't actually. He found something called SGML that he was working with at his day job. He renamed it to HTML, changed the the file extension from .sgml. By the way, the uh, the the letters of SGML were actually. A, about uh, with the 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 first initial of the last name of the people who worked on it, <laughs> but he got rid of all that and renamed it to HTML and dot HTML. Removed about half of the functionality and renamed one of the tags, and then he called it HTML, and then everyone gave him credit for it. But anyway, SGML came out in 1986. So when you go to websites. They're, they're using a markup language developed as SGML in 1986. And we're still doing it for the web right now. Almost every website, right? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of JavaScript and everything else floating around, but they're still using HTML. How about email? SMTP came out in 1981. And there's been some updates to it over the years, and they've added some security and wrapped thing, TLS and whatnot here and there. But the core of the, the idea and the protocol and a lot of the code, which some of it still exists, 1981, 
over a decade before Xorg and Linux were a twinkle in anyone's eye. Uh, Emacs, 1976. VI, 1976. TCP IP has its start in 1974, where it was created as PUP. And it was created by as Pup at Xerox Park, and then uh, Vint Cerf uh, and his team copied most of Pup and renamed it to TCP/IP. Added a couple of things and released it a little bit later on, but it all came about back in 1974. The basics of uh, most of our networking nowadays. 1974 with TCP/IP. Uh, keep going back. How about SQL? SQL. 1974. How about the C programming language? 1972. FTP. How long have people been FTPing? 1971. A lot of you were like, wait a minute, that it makes sense. That trust me, this is this is the order. Um, uh, the Unix shell, SH, 1971. ARPANET, 1969. Unix, 1969. The computer mouse, 1964. ASCII text. So all those ASCII text codes you're using and games and everything else. 1960. How about the concept of a byte? 1956. Regular expressions. Reg, regex? 1951. All of you were like, wait a minute. They came up with regex before, before the byte? Yeah. Yeah. Half a decade before the byte. How do you like that one? And this is just a partial list. I mean, I, I, I'm sure you could come up with uh, a whole bunch of examples of programming languages and window managers and, and, and pieces of software that are still in use, not just still in use, but serves as a, as core pieces that underpin our modern computing experience that came about not just 20 years ago, 30, 40, sometimes 50 or more years ago. And some of that code is still in use today. Those standards are still in use today. So I'm going to, I'm going to posit this. Maybe, maybe the oldness is good. Maybe those battle tested pieces of code, those battle tested standards are a good thing. The reality is some of those things, we were in a very real chance of using some of that software, some of that code, some of those standards for another hundred years. Very, very possible at this point. Very likely, I'd say, before they're ever even retired. And I really don't think, I really don't think that that's bad. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. In fact, I think it's phenomenal. I think it's a testament to a truly great pieces of piece of software. Now, uh, I could also go back and look at software from, you know, just five years ago that was such utter garbage that no one uses it anymore. So I don't think it's the age itself, old or young, that makes software great or better. But once you've got a good piece of software, a, a good modular, well-defined well-crafted piece of software that people have come to rely on as a critical component of systems. And that piece of software has been battle tested and used over the course of not just years, but several decades. I would posit that its value has increased. Because when I look back at Emacs and VI, regardless of what you think of one text editor or another, the design decisions that went into, say, VI are irrelevant nowadays, really, right? I mean, uh, the specific keyboards at the specific terminals connected to the specific uh, low baud speed modems heavily influenced the design of VI and, and, and other text editors as well. But those pieces of software people have come to use for decades, for some people their entire lives, and they become so battle tested that keeping them around is now increasingly valuable. Not just because people have come to rely on them and interdepend on them for other pieces of software and for workflows, but because replacing them would mean replacing them with something that hasn't been battle tested. When I, a lot of times I'll criticize efforts to replace old software, not because I fear the new software. I like new software. But certain pieces of software are just so battle tested and so integral that replacing them becomes silly. 
I see that a great deal with uh, a lot of Rust developers like to replace like some of the, the GNU core utils. Uh, uh, the, the next release of Ubuntu will be famously dropping sudo and ls and all sorts of core utils that just work and have for years, decades with brand new pieces of software that are supposed to be drop-in replacements. But that will invariably have issues that we didn't have before. And it just doesn't seem smart to, to take something that's worked for so long, a tank in software terms, right? Like it's, it's like if, if you have a car and you're like, man, I've had that car since 1962. And if I treat it right and I keep putting oil in that baby, she keeps on running. I don't even know how many miles she's got at this point to, to toss that car out because it's too old. It silly. Um, I remember, I remember, was it, I think it was my, my aunt had this big old electric mixer in her kitchen. And that electric mixer was from the late 60s, early 70s, big old tank. I don't know what it was made. It was made out of kryptonite and iron. It was old. And uh, she's like, man, they don't make them like this anymore. Sturdy, reliable, consistent, lasts forever. And a lot of these pieces of software, a lot of these, these standards within computing are a lot the same way. Reliable, sturdy, lasts forever. And I think that should be praised. I don't think that it should just be praised in the let's keep it in a museum way. Let's use them. Because unlike those, those iron slash kryptonite kitchen mixers, we can make new instances of all of this software by simply running a little copy command. And it's still just as sturdy and reliable and made from iron and kryptonite as the original. And that's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna put it out there into the world that older software, all things being equal, is better than newer software. If the two pieces of software have the same functionality and work in the same way, right? So let's say sudo. If I have a version of sudo that was first developed in, let's say, the late 80s or early 1990s, and another version of sudo that was developed a week ago, with the exact same feature set, same features, that one that was developed 20, 30, or more years ago, that's better software. It just is. Uh, thank you to the Lunduke Journal subscribers for making the Lunduke Journal possible. Uh, if you are a uh, Rust developer that likes to replace everything that's good and old in the world with new untested things, feel free to yell at me at any of the amazing links you find at lunduke.com. Lots of great ways to yell at me there. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, nerds and nerdettes, across this vast and glorious intertube of ours, I do declare... End broadcast.